Welcome back. So, the first stage of Shadowlands is very well underway, BlizzCon Line is very soon, and it's time to work out, therefore, what's going on with Shadowlands, the general state of it. And I'd say this, Shadowlands is less overtly frustrating than Battle for Azeroth, you know? E exiting BFA into Shadowlands felt great. But as times went on, yeah, it became clear that not all is well in the world of Warcraft. Now, look, I'm having a great time as a non-competitive, raid-logging, heroic raid player who's working on Sire Denathrius, a boss with an incredible Phase 3. But beyond that, well, the journey of this video has revealed some answers to us. Some very long discussions have taken place, and Shadowlands often feels like it would be so much better if it were simply rearranged. To put it more clearly, if Shadowlands was a set of Lego, then, well, it's one that was put together in a rush, and it just looks a little bit wrong. Now, like that Lego hypothetical, each individual Lego piece is just fine, and the whole thing will look great if they're just put back together in the right way. And I think that could be the case for this expansion of World of Warcraft. This will not be the most cheery video that you've ever listened to, but there is quite a bit of hope based on the last week of changes the Blizzard have announced and made. So, let's go. Okay, time to talk about the one that does get me quite a little bit, and to cut a whole long story short, to give you the TLDR, to give you the skinny, well, it's simple enough, the casual play. In the past, reputations were quite unique feeling. They had their own flavor of quests, their own theme, their own characters, their own rewards. You know, think Netherwing, Cloud Serpent, Oracles, Frenzy Heart, and such. Now, every single reputation in the game is just world quests. It's all homogenized, there's zero pacing, there's no extra story, there's no fun. And that change from the thing that I think had a lot more heart, soul, and passion in the past to the, well, homogenized system of the future, I think tells so much of the story of casual content in World of Warcraft. So, look, World Quest related stuff, the reps, not fun, not good, worse than the past. Covenant stuff, well, you know what that's hurt by? Callings and World Quests, still being boring. Uh, and then, of course, so much of your progression through your covenant, it's based on two weeklies, you know, to the point where it's kind of hard to feel control, it's hard to feel a sense of your progression, it's hard to feel like you've actually earned that stuff. You kind of feel like you're on rails when half your weekly progression involves clicking 15 dudes in the mall. Then let's talk about the campaigns. Look, they're short as hell, you know? Ugh, they're, they're, what, 10 to 30 minutes inflated by travel time? You know, that amount of content per week is just not enough to make for a well-paced story. There's not enough content there, there's not enough set pieces, there's not enough time spent with the characters such as you know them. And the execution, honestly, is woeful compared to other MMOs like Star Wars The Old Republic, and even what that game did at its launch, Elder Scrolls Online, Final Fantasy XIV, you know? Like, right as in the bit in my Night Fae campaign where my troops were rallying, I was on Yzera blasting enemies, you know, a big, cool, hype moment. Do you know what was playing? Do you know what the music switched to? Default serene Ardenweald music was playing. I mean, that's like watching the Battle of Pelennor Fields, but, you know, to one of those ASMR rain tracks that people tried to get to sleep to. It completely killed the mood. You know, the campaigns, they're just rife with sloppy stuff like that. It ain't Blizzard polish, it ain't Blizzard quality, and with this sort of thing, it's death by a thousand cuts. It's just all those little things come together to make it not feel good. It's so hard to take the story seriously when, honestly, it feels like such an afterthought in its content and its execution. Now let's talk about the reward stuff. Um, Blizzard have not innovated on mounts, and I think that is definitely an issue. I will say though, the new cosmetic gear, right, especially those new back slots, that's really cool. Pretty exciting to get, I really like that. But still, I think the Blizzard needs to innovate more on rewards here. Now I don't know if that means, you know, mount dies or gear dying, but I'll put it this way. Mount number 380 is just always going to be less exciting than mount number 15. That kind of stuff just does not do it for players anymore. Blizzard need to work out something cool and new to give us. 
So honestly, for me, that general covenant experience, the general covenant progression, even some of the actual mini games, which are a bit more nice actually, but that stuff just doesn't overall come together into something that I think is super Moorish and super, super playable. Um, and at least on the casual like content, it does, does seem like the likes of ESO, FF14, and SWOTOR have World of Warcraft beat. And that sucks. I want to see World of Warcraft be best there, you know? And I think it's just Blizzard need to be able to uh, see the narratives that Final Fantasy XIV pulls off, including the quality of execution and that game's willingness to actually let characters and stuff breathe. Uh, Blizzard needs to see that and match it, at the very least. Ideally, beat it. Look, World of Warcraft is still a bigger game than that, and I think World of Warcraft going for your more uh, traditional, sort of fast-paced, big, epic moments, that certainly is something that can have a broader audience than, say, some of the way that FF14, um, you know, handles its stuff, as much as I do think it's quite cool. Um, th this could be a humongous success for them, and to be honest, with the amount of resources that Blizzard has, there's no excuse for them to be beaten by all of their contemporaries, and even versions of their contemporaries that are years old at this stage. They gotta do it better. They gotta invest. Simple as. Well, with all that sort of casual collection content talked about, it's time to do what I call the troubled duo. Torghast and the Maw. Look, Torghast, it's sad. I'd use stronger language if it wouldn't get us demonetized. The most possible fun you can have in Torghast, and what most of us were doing on beta when we reported to you that it was really fun, is any form of gameplay that lets you get loads and loads of powers and get towards a defined build, right? That big, long, rogue light run feel. Now, this can't happen in the twisting corridors mode the Blizzard shipped into Shadowlands, but even that has a bunch of problems. Look, there's just not enough anima powers to get the build diversity, especially, you know, those build-making anima powers, and also doubly especially because you're so incentivized to just go with safe bets. So there's not enough of that to give you that inter, you know, between-run longevity, right? To make it feel spiced up and unique. Rewards. Let's do them. Torghast rewards suck, and Twisting Corridor rewards kind of suck too. Now, what's there is great once you hit those layers, but look at Island Expeditions. They had so much more. So, you know, Twisting Corridors is the one mode that'll actually let runs get to that stage of fun, but it is lacking rewards. It doesn't have enough anima powers, right, to really go the distance across a whole bunch of uh, play sessions. And, you know, there's really no fallback rewards there, right? Which means it doesn't feel like it respects your time. And um, there's barely any actual rewards. I mean, on the fallback rewards, look, there's a reason why it's not a casual thing. There's a reason why most roguelites, you know, your Hades, your dead cells, uh, they've got a currency that persists between runs that you get from playing the game. And that does not exist in Torghast because you do not get Stygia from Torghast. And yes, Stygia is that currency, but you get all of that from the Maw. And that means that your Torghast gameplay does not progress your Torghast gameplay. You know? It's like, what if raids didn't make you better at raiding? Doing Torghast should give you the stuff you need to do better at Torghast. It's not even that it's a game loop that doesn't work, it's bits of a game loop, not turned into a loop. Regular Torghast runs, then, have got their own problems, right? The six floor ones. They're not long enough to actually get your build to be wacky and fun, right? And do you know what that means? That means they're just boring. And you never want players to be doing boring things, much less the boring version of one of the best potential features you've got. And then, man, they're doing it for Soul Ash, right? They're just doing it to get their Legos. And this means that people are incentivized via player power to do the worst possible version of Torghast twice per week. Blizzard put their worst foot forward, and they made people sick of Torghast early, even before the good game mode came out, and even with Twisting Corridors having its own issues, and them also cramming us through the various different faction leader quests. So, to sum it up here, feature with immense potential, could be incredible, but it's not been realized because of the very strange way the content has been arranged. And I would have loved to have said that for most of the beta process, we could have been helpful here, but impossible because this stuff came in so late and wasn't really explained. Speaking of that, the Maw. It's just odd because it's where you go to get Stygia, even though Stygia far more applies to your Torghast runs, which are totally different gameplay to the Maw. And, you know, you can't do much in the Maw each day, so you can't really sink into it. 
And to be real with you, it's rarely that much of a fun experience. I mean, look, going there to click your weekly 15 dudes, that ain't top-notch gameplay. In a, you know, I mean, come on, you could be playing anything else. And the lack of mounting in the maw, I think that is something that, uh, well, has not resulted in the tension and stakes that Blizzard thought it would add. Uh, so to my mind, it's just made the thing feel really slow and boring, and I'm, I'm rarely thinking about travel time, and I think the way that Blizzard um, felt that would have done. So, in the whole, it's just really half-baked. And of course it is. It was essentially revamped at the last minute of beta, a minuscule number of iterations happened, and we were never really kept abreast as testers, so unsurprising that it's not came together. As it stands, I'm struggling to see this zone fitting into the game, right? What is its place in the game in its current iteration? I mean, I guess it's supposed to be there if you want to level up your conduits, if you want to get better in Torghast, or if you want to get sockets. But none of those things feel right or natural for the gameplay that we are doing in the Maw. Those are things that should be earned by doing their respective bits of content, which then just leaves the Maw feeling odd, right? That Torghast gameplay make me better at Torghast. Make my dungeoning, you know, say, upgrade my conduits past item level 200, and so on and so forth. So essentially, neither gameplay nor reward feel right to me in the Maw. Meaning that yes, it is less than the sum of its parts. It's like the mall was some leftover zone, they did not know what to do with it in terms of gameplay or rewards, so instead they carved off little bits of progression from the rest of the game and put them into the mall. And that of course has just robbed that from those bits of the game and dragged us into the mall sort of against our will because it rarely feels like it's a fun thing to do. As I said, Lego, Lego set, put together wrong. It's almost as if this was a rush job and the expansion didn't have enough time in the oven. Okay, let's talk about the pillars of the end game. This is where the actual content of playing the game bit gets better. Raiding, okay, look, Nathria to me is pretty good as far as raids go. I'm very sad I missed the likes of Desarlor, but here we are. Look, I really like Zymox, Darkvein, I really like Sludge Fist, he's really fun. Denathrius, phase one and two, yawn. Phase three, awesome and heroic, really fun. And really the most of the rest of the fights are like pretty decent, bar, well, okay, Kill Pass is not fun, decent idea, didn't come together. Um, Stone Legion Generals, mm. fight kinda sucks and it's one that Blizzard from beta through to live with hotfixes have very much struggled to get right. And even in last week's attempt, yeah, we found weird issues in terms of timings that should not line up in the way that they do that literally make a, you know, just gimp your run. Anyway, right, Stone Eaton Generals, enough of them. Uh, but still, overall, yeah, it is solid enough of a raid. It is pretty good. And from my experience, I really enjoyed it. It has been my primary mode of progression, and I have not been forcing myself through any bits of WoW that I don't enjoy, meaning I have been doubling down on the raid with the raid group that is so much fun to hang out with, and that's meant that my World of Warcraft experience with the raid has been great. And that's me ignoring Soulbinds, Anima, Conduits, any of that stuff. Sure, it's not optimal. Have I been progressing progression bosses with a 158 uh, Covenant Conduit? Yes. Sorry, Dakor. Uh, is that optimal? Obviously no, but I'm also just the type of player who is not going to force myself through content that I do not like uh, for the sake of it, because I only have so much time here on Earth and I'm not going to spend it farming Stygia for conduit upgrades. And as long as I can reliably pull off blue and purple parses, well, it's good enough, right? So that's why I've, I think I've enjoyed the raid stuff so much. I have avoided the negatives, I have doubled down on the positives, and I've been playing with a great group of people. So if you're in a situation like that, yeah, you're probably going to enjoy it a whole bunch. Similar for M+, I'm not your guy for M+, that is a big future project I want to get into though, I'm traditionally more of a raider, but I'll say this, I've enjoyed the dungeons and I did them, you know, I did them all in Mythic, I've done like a few Mythic pluses and did enjoy those quite a bit too. Uh, from what I understand, the seasonal affix is pretty neat this time around, and uh, you know, apart from the damage that other parts of the game have inflicted on M+, like progression, it seems like the core of the content there is really quite good. Now, PvP, moving on. I cannot really speak at all competitively. I will say this, as a casual player, I do generally like 
lower time to kill balancing, and that has meant that the new PvP has generally been quite fun. Yes, I did play a bit of that as an MM Hunter. You know what they're like in a BG, but hey, it's been fun. Uh, and then also what helps that is the new PvP gearing. It's great. It's so much better. And that meant that at the start of this expansion, I was doing so much in PvP. And yes, things have fallen off as I've raided, but I am in a situation where I know I want to progress my character doing RBGs with my raid team after we get curve. And I really can't wait for that. It's going to be fun. So if I basically just gave Raiding Mythic Plus and PvP a positive content review, why could there possibly be any drama around any of them? In progression. Blizzard killed Titan Forging, they killed bonus rolls, and they killed pretty much everything else that was an add-on to gear. Gear is gear, and it drops a bit less often because of that, and each drop is worth more. Tell you what, that felt actually pretty damn great in initial progression. To me, generally does feel actually quite great. But there is a bit of Blizzard's plan that did not work. They wanted to have the Great Vault do the heavy lifting, to replace the role of catch-up systems like your Titan Forging and your Valor Points in the past. But it has not done the heavy lifting, I think, as well as any of us thought. Not least because you throw RNG and people having a negativity bias together, and yeah, they will overweigh their disappointments to their gains. Now look, I think the vault is good, I think it is better than what we had, and some system like that that respects some of your efforts and throws more cool stuff at you or, you know, more options, fine, good. But I think for a lot of us it does put a whole bunch of progress onto a big weekly roll, which can feel bad sometimes and I think can feel quite bad in comparison to a system like Valor Points in the past for those of us who experienced it in those past expansion contexts. Then for Mythic Plus, like it being infinitely farmable meant the Blizzard felt like they really needed to lower down those end of item level runs. And that meant that Mythic players were, or Mythic Plus players were especially left at the whim of the Great Vault to get their best gear sets. Overall, I'd say this, like three steps forward, one or two back, but I think it still is moving in the right direction. Um, all it will take is a few smart changes most of which involve keeping it simple and going a bit back to the past, and I think gearing uh, will be in a fantastic position. We just need to do the simple there. Now, beyond that, we've got conduits and soul binds. Look, soul binds, you just unlock more of them for getting your weekly renown, so that's pretty boring. And to be honest, bar getting the odd bag of fish or herbs, uh, their effects are just not all that cool or noticeable to me, and I know that could be different for some specs. And then really, same for conduits, just that maybe your best conduit might not be from content that you're overly excited about. I mean, I don't want to farm a whole bunch of, like, callings to get the particular one for Wild Spirit, so that kind of sucks. And, you know, if you're a Mythic Plus player, then of course with conduits, God help you, because so much of your conduit progress involves going to the Maw, getting your Stygia, and getting lucky on your, you know, Stygia conduit upgrades. Very glad I never had to think about that system. Uh, and of course, let's not even bother with, you know, the Stygia grind sockets. That's, I mean, come on. Honestly, none of that stuff has worked out. And it just feels like the time spent making conduits and stuff like that was a waste. And like it could produce more things we'd enjoy elsewhere. So yeah, progression, you know, it's just not that well considered. That is my honest opinion now. And I think it's because of obvious reasons that this expansion had to be rushed. And guess what? I could almost guarantee that Blizzard would agree with me. Why did I say that statement? Did Blizzard contact me? The answer is, uh, well, no, but I did open by saying that Shadowlands feels like a Lego set put together in a big old rush such that it didn't really turn out that well. And when we see Blizzard's response, I think we see that yes, they probably do agree. Shadowlands is, I believe, less than the sum of its parts, perhaps significantly so. Do Blizzard see that way? That is the question. Of course, I hope they understand how things like, say, tying Torghast into Soul Ash and Stygia into various forms of progression, how that has wounded parts of the game. Aside from that, there could be some hope that Blizzard understands. On the most recent PTR build, Stygia sockets and conduits were actually limited to only cover Season 1 gear, essentially. Now, that pretty much, to me, looks like Blizzard paving the way for a revamp, setting a very hard cutoff at the end of Season 1. 
And then in the gearing front, they increased uh, raid loot by 33% to try to make up for things. And they announced the new Valor Point system for Mythic Plus players. Yes, I agree with most of the flaws that people are calling out there. I do still think that it is in a better direction for most people. So, you know, at least they're listening, though, yeah, it could be better. So how could Shadowlands beyond these things be more than the sum of its parts? Because I do think the Blizzard is working on fixes to, like, a bunch of the things that I just mentioned there, but there are a few things where I'm worried about how they generally think about the content that they make. Uh, right, as I said, Torghast progression and rewards need to be totally rearranged. I think that's similar for the Maw. I mean, let's get it out of Torghast, out of sockets, out of conduits. That stuff's all not good, I think. And with things like Stygi and Soul Ash, this is now what I'm thinking. Blizzard, please do not bribe people into doing your experimental features, or things like that, with player power. Because I'll tell you, I really liked Horrific Visions, and I really did not like how you forced me to do some of the most dull world content the game has had to actually go and do the content that I liked. All that made me do was say, ah, well, guess I'm just going to raid log for this patch. Uh, so, let's cut out that weird tying in of the player power and let the content shine for just being its own thing. And as a part of that, well, keeping things simple and just making more great content, making more great rewards and putting those things in the game. That essentially, for the likes of Torghast, is what we need. We need more anima powers, we need more rewards. Look, Somebody begrudgingly doing Torghast for Soul Ash, that may produce the player activity numbers on a chart that look good, that look like a lot of engagement in the feature. But if those people aren't actually enjoying their time, then all that player data is low quality and misleading, and is at the expense of the satisfaction that people get from other parts of the game. So in a way, you're kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul with your own player's behavior, because guess what? If you make me feel like I have to do a whole bunch of things to just be okay for Raid, then I'm not going to feel great about Raid, and that does increase my risk, for an example, of wandering off. So there's that. Now, also for things like Covenants, well, look here, right? Narratives have tended to be disjointed. I mean, I met Devos before I met Devos, in a way. That narrative I saw as well with Bomb Samity, uh, play out of sync. So that was odd. Uh, not great. Now, at least for, say, like my Covenant, the Night Fae, uh, when I was doing their campaign, I did think, you know, okay, some cool elements, some cool moments, but I'll also say this. There's nowhere near enough content, and there was not enough time spent with the characters. And that meant that overall there just was not enough of a journey for me to actually engage that and find that like an exciting thing to log in and do. I mean, look, compared to other MMO stories that I've seen or played, like be it ESO, FF14, SWOTOR, yeah, like the Covenant campaign stuff, it does come up pretty damn short. You know, Blizzard put a lot of effort into Mythic Plus and into raiding, into gear progression and systems. You know, they love their MDIs and their things, but you know, sure, fine, whatever. But I'd also say, please don't forget that it's World of Warcraft, the world of Warcraft. And I think right now, they are just treating it like instanced content to do of Warcraft. And I think they need to really refine themselves when it comes to telling stories in the game. I'd say they've even regressed in a few ways, and that frankly, there is no reason with the amount of money that World of Warcraft brings in, how it is the top dog of MMOs, that it cannot compete with its contemporaries, because its contemporaries do actually beat it in this front. I think that is a pity. Now, hard to solve that problem within the expanse of this expansion. As for the other things, though, I really do think that Blizzard could take this set of Lego apart, and still knowing that the pieces are actually pretty damn good, they could put it back together, and I think it could just work for players a lot more. Now that said, there is one more thing that I do want to talk about because I think it is important. Wastes of time. Because frankly, why were conduits even made, right? To me, it just seems like a complete waste of development time, especially when we just think about how that went in beta. Um, they put all this work into Covenant abilities, right? You know, yet for most specs, though, you're just going to be using a single one and a single one only, and you can't actually change to even see the others. Would it perhaps have been a better idea to just make, you know, three, or, well, you know, if you have three specs, three abilities, but, you know, an ability per spec? Um, 
and have them be tailored because overall you'd be creating less abilities with less introspect dependencies and would that not have just made for more fun abilities? Sure, you wouldn't get a unique one with each covenant, but I mean, if we're only going to be using like one from one con covenant, how is that better than having a unique one for each spec? Would that not have been better and more simple than the way that ended up going? And it, for me, when I just think about so much of this expansion, I cannot help escape the feeling that the systems of World of Warcraft are kind of just an endless black hole of development time and one that usually results in contrived BS that people actually don't care about anyway. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've not thought about conduit energy other than just thinking, wow, what a waste of time that was. I mean, look, perhaps if Blizzard just made a big effort to, you know, keep things really, really, really simple, um, then they'd have more time to, you know, put the expansion together well, right? To actually construct it and craft all their pieces into a better whole. And perhaps where we wouldn't be in a position where Shadowlands often feels like less than the sum of its parts. And well, that, you know, start of a Blizzard expansion as of late issue where they need to put it back together a little bit in the 0 0.5 or 1.5 patch. Uh, plus, you know, perhaps if things were a bit more simple and they actually were able to put things on beta in time, then perhaps what we beta tested would have actually matched and been reminiscent of what they shipped. Because I'll tell you this much, so much feedback was pointless without vital context, developer's intent, or just was rendered out of date by how things went uh, because of how late so much of the endgame progression actually hit servers, you know? And that just meant that it was so hard to test all these things and to understand what was going on and what the general layout of the expansion and the progression was going to be. And frankly, communication fell off a cliff at a few points where there was just questions that would have helped make this expansion a lot better but it was really impossible to give the feedback. Now, I know that's because of Blizzard were in a humongous rush, but that really is the point. Because of that rush, stuff was behind, things got put together, I think, a bit quickly, and that's why we now have issues, now that it's played out for a few weeks or months. So, you know, perhaps all this stuff is why, perhaps for, you know, for years now, systems have felt rushed and have damaged the game a bit when they have came out. I mean, that's happened so much over the last while. I wish the systems in this game would just stay more simple, such that we wouldn't have just an endless cycle of talking about systems, which is really boring stuff, actually, because, um, you know, it's the content and the experiences that we share with our friends in a game like this that's what matters. And I really don't think that just spinning our wheels on conduits is, is anything that gets us closer to that. So overall then, what's the future looking like? Well, I'd say this, right? Seeing the PTR, good changes. Is it all perfect? Maybe not. It is all good though. It's all moving in the right direction. So I think that is good stuff in the progression front. Now, there are some fundamentals. I think Blizzard needs to invest so much more in world content and in, you know, the amount of effort they actually, not effort, amount of resources they allocate towards things like narrative because they kind of try to hit all their big moments, but there's so little supporting material in between that other than clapping at a cinematic that uses cinematic technique well, there, there's just, it does not feel like any of these stories get enough time to play out. So, look, it's World of Warcraft. It makes a lot of money, right? And I know Bobby Kotick has got a very, very large compensation package. I get it, but uh, come on. World of Warcraft could use some more beans. Um, I mean... <laughs> Like, surely, surely that's for the long-term health of World of Warcraft, which is for the long-term health of the stock. Um, so yeah, man, for me, it's just, as I look into the future, what I want to see is less time spinning wheels and systems, uh, and, you know, just that losing the forest for the trees thing. You know, we're always thinking about tactics and implementation, and all about strategy and direction, and I think that's what's really important. You know, we just, we need to end this thing of, you know, stuff feeling like it's being launched half-baked and then, you know, we spend the next while rushing in fixes and stuff. Um, some degree of that, which is just responsiveness, which is actually a really good thing to see, you know, some degree that's always going to be natural, but at the same sort of rate, it does seem like some of this stuff could have been solved if there was just a little bit more time and maybe systems were just a little bit less complex and we did not have dramas over, you know, covenants and over Torghast torments and all those things that happened on beta. And also, to be fair with them, uh, you know, if we weren't in a big old global pandemic that's kind of making it hard to do anything. So, 
there is also that, and that is why I think we do have to cut them, uh, you know, some slack for this one. Okay, right. State of Shadowlands. That is essentially my opinion. Now, there is technically more stuff I could talk about. I could talk about the Queen's Conservatory and all that stuff, yeah, or the, the Shadow Priest revamp, but... You know, I wanted to keep this broad, the overall just state of World of Warcraft, how it's going, where the future could be. Yeah, you know, as I said, Lego kit could be awesome if it was put together in, you know, a really good way. But, ah, right, you know, it feels like they were maybe a bit drunk or a bit rushed whenever it was time to sort of put all the bits they'd made together. Which, yeah, you know, quick reassembly, perhaps in a 9.1, maybe we'll all be having a lot more fun. Anyway, look, that's it for me. What I want to know is, what are those parts of the game that you think were just a waste of, of time for development? Now, you ask 100 people, you'll probably get 100 different answers, but I'd at least be interested to see if there was trends there, you know, systems like conduits, if people just really think like they're not particularly great. And um, then the other thing I'd ask people is, are there any things that you think are interesting in other MMOs that you think Blizzard should think about and adopt. You know, for me, if I was to do, say, two things, I think mounts and general transport in Guild Wars 2 is extremely interesting. And, uh, you know, the bits I've seen of FF14 seems like they're doing some legit, really cool stuff in the narrative front. And uh, I think they have some approaches that could be worth learning from. So those are my answers. I'd love to know yours. That's it for me. See you next time.